Hey everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to our continued playthrough of Darkest Night. This might be episode 12 or 13. I've kind of lost count. But anyway, we're about to continue on. Uh, thank you for your patience. As you know, um, I've been dealing with some personal stuff that's not ending at this point or improving at this point. So please pardon the delays. Uh, and thanks to David, there's still some great stuff going up on the channel with his Shadows of Brimstone playthrough. And there will be more and more, of course, as we go along. But anyway, I wanted to get uh, get to back to our Darkest Night game, uh, which has gone relatively interesting. I'm pretty convinced we're not going to win. Um, and in fact, I, I'm not even sure if we get to, to a darkness of 30, which, by the way, I've never actually had happen in this game. I've been close, but I've never actually seen the darkness track get to 30. Now, what happens at 30 is that... Um, uh, well, actually, right now, all blights are plus one. i got to remember that. So, uh, have plus one might. So, that means, like, for example, oh, man, see, like, I, I can't even destroy some of these, like those flux cages, because they require a six. But also, at, at 30, the, the blights start cr being created in the monastery. I've never gotten to that point, and I think if we do, instead of prolong the inevitable agony, unless I, for some reason, see some path to victory, I will halt at that stage. However, I, I'm not, I haven't given up yet. I do think there is always a path to victory. You just got to keep giving it the old college try until you get to the end. But I consider hitting the 30 on the darkness track the end. But let's get started. We got a lot to do and try and accomplish. I finally got somebody in place where we can get some more clues. Remember, we need uh, to get to 20 to be able to successfully do this because of one of the powers of the necromancer that's going to destroy the first relic that we pick up. We also have this in play right now. I have to destroy a, um, a blight for that to happen. And some of them are rather difficult to destroy. So we'll see if we can get to it and get some of that done. Because if we can do that, then this will become unactive. And the reason I'm leaving it out on the board right here is because it is currently active. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go to it. I think we're going to start first with the Paragon, who happens to be in a place where I can get some things done. Of course, we have to draw his event card first, so let's do that. The Paragon, Paragon's in the ruins, and, and what I wanted to do is uh, search this uh, battle site, because it can give us, every time we do, it's got a very good likelihood of giving us more clues, and clues get us to relics, relics win us the game. So when you get Metamorphosis, randomly select one of your powers, then... Spend one grace or place the selected power at the bottom of the deck and draw a card from the same deck. Oh, we can actually, we're going to do the second part. I'm fine with that. Um, you suddenly feel as if the fates have split, spilt ink over the story of your life. What has changed? All right, well, what has changed is we're going, I think I know which one. There's one that we don't use very often. Yeah, it's this one. Um, this uh, consecrate says discard any item. Uh, every hero at your location gains a spark. One hero at your location draws a power card. This is cool, but we don't have a lot of items. Um, you know, I mean, we have, like, in fact, I'm looking at the characters, and while we have sparks, no one has items. So I think we're going to send this to the bottom of the Paragon's deck, and we're going to draw a new one off the top and just see what it does. Man of the Hour. This can't be bad. It's a bonus. That's even better. That means it just happens. Plus one die when attempting a quest. Oh, that's great. Very helpful. We do have some quests on the board. Not going to help right now, though. Uh, when a new quest appears on the map, you may immediately move to its location. Well, that's super... That's really way better than that other one, right? So that was a great um, um, random event for us. Now, what we're going to do with the... Uh, Paragon now, as we're going to do this battle site, we're going to make a search roll, I think. Look and see if I have any powers. By the way, he's he's warded against his aura of fortitude is active against flux cages right now. And so um, he cannot be affected by this flux, flux cage when he comes and leaves, or other characters when they come and go from the space. So we, he may get some other people down there. We'll see. I sent the enchanter up to take care of a quest that's important to us. We'll see how that goes. All right, anyway, we're going to do this, I think. Let me just double check powers. Well, I don't see, yeah, I don't know. I guess we're just going to go for it. There's no way, I don't see any way to get any extra dice for the roll. Let's see what we get. Roll a five. That means we did succeed. The search value is a four. So we succeeded at a search, which is great. But with a five, oh, we gain a treasure chest if a five is rolled while searching here. Okay. So we gained a treasure chest. Now, what does a treasure chest do? 
Well, it's it's an item. I mean, I guess I, if I had kept that other thing, that would have been good, but I didn't. And we're going to look at the treasure chest real quick. It's this one here. Uh, discard it any time to, to draw a new power card. Why? I don't know why you don't just do that. It's one of the items I was like, I'm never going to keep this item. Well, except we had that power that helps. So we're just going to draw a new power card off the top, or of Temperance. Activate heroes at your location. Gain a spark at the end of each turn where they did not attack. Search or attempt any quest or mystery. Wow, so if you're just chilling in a space, hiding out or something, you can gain sparks. It's an extra power for the Paragon. Uh, we didn't get any clues, though, so that was not good. And that is going to be the end of his turn. Okay, so next up, I think we'll go with uh, someone who is in a bad spot. We got the Enchanter. She is here. And let's see, let's get take her event. Uh, Watchers, okay, compared to the Darkness track. Oh my gosh. Well, it's plus 20, so it's going to be Ravens. Um, oh man, she has to roll a 5 or more or lose 2 Secrecy. I don't think she has anything that can help her with this. I'm going to look for her. Tactics, it is an Elude, right? No, yeah, it is an Elude, 5, so I could do this. Elude, 2 dice, refresh. But I can't refresh powers, so the best that would do is give me 2 dice. I think the best I can do is... Um, if I roll a six, anyway. So we're going to do that. We're going to use the tactic of... Can I use tactics there? Let me look at what's there. Yes, I can. So we're going to use the tactic of Ride the Ether, which will give us two dice to elude. And we got a six. So we did elude the crows. And it says, A hushed word, a sudden stillness, eyes in the dark. So those eyes in the dark did not find us. And now we can take our action. Our action is going to be to solve this quest. What's it say? Spend one spark for one success. She has three sparks. She will spend one of them for one success. And that is going to com complete it is going to give us an artifact. This is why I did not want it to complete because it was going to up the darkness track. So she is about to have a second artifact. So let's get the big giant artifact deck out. I've seen so few of these in action and to not spoil it for myself, I've never looked through them. So what do we get? The Lens of Truth. You may ignore the effects of these blights. Confusion, decay, corruption, oblivion, evil presence, unholy, or terror. That is super powerful. Wow. The Lens of Truth. I've never seen this uh, artifact come into play. I've never even seen the artifact. Like I said, I didn't look through them. The Lens of Truth. Wow. So, like, for example, it doesn't say taint. It doesn't say taint, but there are, there's a, lots of confusions on the board and everything like that. And there's an unholy aura up in the mountains. That is a very effective artifact for her. Uh, and we completed that quest, which is what she was wanting to do. Now she is going to have to deal with a couple of bad things. So that's going to mark the end of her turn. Now, she's not too healthy, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, she first has to elude, and we're going to use the same tactic. We're going to elude these, these zombies. They require three. We get two dice. If we roll a six, we get the refresh power, but we don't because of this, and we haven't destroyed a blight. So... A one and a four. I just knocked stuff everywhere. Oh, those were the two things that were on the quest there. We don't need those either. So a four succeeds for us. We eluded the zombies. Now we have to elude the skeletons. A six and a two. We eluded the skeletons as well. She is safe. She is running around hiding in the swamps quite effectively. Good job, uh, Enchanter, even though that did not get us any closer to winning. Okay, and the reason I did those two folks first is because the other two are in the monastery. Now... The uh, the knight, I think, I really want the knight to gain some, um, so now I, we activated the knight's oath of purging, and I was going to send the knight off to destroy blights. However, I, and this is really risky and might be a huge mistake, um, but I think we're going to just camp there. Because like this one's too, I, I can get down there. Maybe do this one. What do I need? I need to fight versus. Yeah, but I have to have two turns, so I'd have to get down there this turn. I wouldn't be able to fight there. There's all this stuff there too. Uh, I don't know. I think that's now I can move into the village for free and keep moving. That is one of the cool parts about that. If would which, which would her secrecy is already at the top it can be. She does have a spark, but I think I think kind of. I think I'm going to keep her there and pray. I want more um, more grace back for her so she can go really fight some of these blights off. Let's see. A four to four. That's great. That's two for her. So that means... So when you pray, what that means is... I'm going to go boom, boom. When you pray, you get one for every three plus rolled. 
we got two fours, so she was able to pray at the monastery. She can't go, I guess she can, she can't go any higher than, than five, um, even though her default is six, because those are the rules. You just can't get any higher than five. Um, well, let me see. Is that true when you're praying? I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm, a, I'm pretty sure it's true. I sometimes second-guess myself. Up to default. Okay, so we can actually get another grace there, and she will go up to default. So now the knight's in a great position. Can she get out there and be effective and try and win this for us? We'll see in the next round, because that's going to be the end of her turn. And then we have the, uh, the exorcist. So the exorcist is also in the monastery, and I need to roll a six to activate this radiant boon. I did not, so the, the Radiant Boon is not active, but the Courageous Boon is, and that's the one that gives us plus one die. So I can move to the village and get somewhere. I can get just I can get anywhere this turn, anywhere on the board in one turn because of the ley lines in the village allowing us to take a free move into the village. But where do I want to go with the Exorcist? You know, it's interesting, but I think I want to take the Exorcist up to the... Um, yeah, up to the mountains. Um, let me show you why. So the only way we can win is to get secret, to get uh, clues. We, that means we need to get secrets out, mysteries out. So we got to get some mysteries out. And the only way we can do that is to search. One of the best places to search is over here. But this is really bad. Losing a grace on entering is bad. And plus two search difficulty, so that's no longer the best place, best place to search, making the village actually the best place to search right now. But also, the necromancer's there, and who knows where the necromancer's going to go. Uh, most likely after the paragon, maybe, I don't know, the enchanter, actually, the enchanter's it's going to go after the enchanter, so I could move the exorcist there uh, for free and take an action there, like a search action. Searching in there is a three, and you can't search while there's monsters there. You just have to deal with the monsters. I think that's what we're going to do, because he's in a pretty good place. He's got his max grace of three, and he's got a secrecy of four. When he moves, it'll go up to five. I think we're okay, and he's got some pretty good powers. He might be able to kill those zombies there and get rid of this thing. So let's do that. We're going to move there. And for this turn, now these require sixes, but we've got some powers. So uh, we got this fight with two dice when attacking a blight or the Necromancer and re-roll once. So I think he will use his tactic of Banish. He's going to take on one of these guys. That's going to put him... He went up to a 5 secrecy, so back to a 4 secrecy. We'll see if he can get that. That's going to give him 2 dice. He will activate his Courage Boon as well. And that will give him 3 dice. Seems like the best bet. He does not have any sparks. Okay, let's see if we can do it. A 5-5 five, five, and a 5 is a miss because of this. So all three of those missed. And he did not succeed in defeating one of those zombies. Now, though, he is in their space, and he is going to have to deal with them. He still has plus one die for the turn, so he's going to get two, two dice on all of this, because he's first going to have to hide from the, the, both the zombies. So first this one, uh, he succeeded with a six. I wish we'd rolled that last time. And this one, he got a three, just made it, so he is okay. All right, well, uh, he succeeded in not drawing the attention of the zombies. He eluded them, but he also did not succeed in destroying one of them. So that's the end of his turn, and that is going to be the end of the round. So what do we do now? Well, this gets rough. Okay, that goes up to 28. We are almost at the, the at death's door with this. And then we got, I'm just going to move this over a little bit so we can do this. We got one, two, th this will be a third one on there. It's about to go. It's going to put a taint blight there at the end of that. And then up here, the broken seal. We're going to put another one on there. It's still got a couple turns to go. Maybe I should have gone up there. I don't know. I still can with the knight next turn for free and then try and tackle that. But we have to exhaust any number of powers. Um, we, uh, no, there's no way we're getting that. That one's crazy, especially with this, this sealed power out. It means we won't be able to do anything if we try and go after that. We could get this one. we still got some time that the knight might be able to get there with a free action attack and then next turn attack before it expires. I, I don't know if that would work either. Anyway, that's the, the clue, all that good stuff. So let's move the, the roll for the necromancer now. Necromancer rolled a one. Didn't see anybody, so it's, he's just going to move where a one takes him in this world, which is going to be up here to the mountains. So interestingly, so the... I'm trying to think. The No, the... Um, Enchanter still has a one. Yeah, okay. So he did move up there. 
did not see the enchanter. And let's drop a blight in there. So we're going to drop a blight up in the mountains. It's going to be some sh a shroud. A shroud blight is going up in the mountains. Let's get that out. Where is that? I'm looking, looking, looking. There it is. Shroud. Uh, basically, it protects other blights that are there. So now the unholy aura is protected by the shroud. It's, in it, it's up in the mountains covering it. All right, that marks the end of the turn for the Necromancer. We're going to go back around, play our next round. We're getting awfully close to being done. I think I might just continue on. If if I can't pull something out, of the, a rabbit out of the hat by the time we hit 30, I don't think we're going to get that much closer. So let's see how this goes. All right, let's get on with our next set of turns. I think, oh, I think we're going to start with... Um, the Enchanter, I, she uh, she can do a number of things right now. I think might work out. I was just checking to see with her new artifact what she can avoid. And well, there's not a whole heck of a lot, but maybe she can get down there and get some clues with the Paragon. So let's start with her. She is here in the swamp, and I'll let her draw her first card. Set back. Uh oh. Count the number of blights in your location. Three. Do the three. Spend a spark or lose a grace. It says, you failed again. It always goes wrong, and every day the sky is a little darker. Why even try? Well, there's some truth to that, I suppose, but here's her spark, and she will do that to get to, to avoid that issue. Now, I think what she is going to do, she has a wonderful power that might already, oh, it's already exhausted. Oh, bummer. Um, let's see, what can she do that will be useful? I don't know. I'm looking through her cards. I think she's just going to move down to here. Now, because the flux cage is there and he's there, she won't be affected by it because he's got the um, his uh, aura of fortitude up, which protects against the flux cage. Unfortunately, her artifact does not, but that's okay. What I want to do is get down there and see if she can spend a couple turns trying to see if we can get to 20 clues. I doubt we can. Anyway, that's the end of her turn. What a turn for her, right? Not very effective. All right, um, next up, I'm not going to do the Paragon quite yet. I think, let's see, we could do the Exorcist. I w I'd really love to get rid of this before um, that comes up, because like the Enchantress could have tried to re uh, refresh her power or something, but that thing is still out there, so it's causing us a bunch of problems. But to do that, we have to destroy a Blight. You know, I tried to destroy these two last time. That did not go very well. Um, but I don't think that's a bad idea again. Or do we search? Might be worth searching and then just fending these guys off. Except he doesn't have a very good ability to fend them off. But let's go do his turn next. First, we're going to draw this event. And it says, uh, Lich. Uh-oh, that's bad. <laughs> the air is filled with foul magic. Twisting your nose and scalding your tongue, a sticky green light blossoms from its staff. Um, we got to evade or attack for five. It doesn't really matter. I think he's going to lose a grace here, so let's just give it a go. A four, he does. Um, he loses a grace. That puts him down to two, and he is there with that, that stuff. So he is going to search. Unfortunately, we oh, now, though, we do get to roll two dice, and hopefully he can activate one of these two things. Two fives. So he does get his boon of courage again, which he's going to immediately activate. Uh, boom. Uh, you know, it doesn't require an action to activate. It does not require an action to activate, but he gets two dice. And what is he going to do with those two dice? He's going to search. Making a last ditch effort to see if we can get some mysteries on the board. He rolled a three and a two, so he failed at. No, he didn't. He succeeded at searching. That is awesome. So uh, let's draw a map card and see what he found in the village. Uh -oh. That's not that great. He's he got a um, a waystone. I can discard this to to uh, instantly move to any location and gain an, a um, secrecy. So it's not a bad item at all. It's just not helping us at this moment. So there is his waystone. That is awesome. And then he's going to have to um, elude these two guys. And he gets two dice on each of them because his his courage boon is active. Uh, so he evaded one of them. And he evaded the other. God, why can't I roll those sixes when I need them? Okay, well, um, anyway, he did what he did there, and that's the end of his turn. So uh, we'll flip his token over. And uh, now I got the knight. The knight is pretty healthy. Knight's in good shape there. Um, you know, we can get a free move into 
uh, the village and try and search again. I don't know if the village is good for secrets. Actually, it says it is. So we, I think that's what we're going to do. So the knight, is, knight has a Oath of Purging active. So we're going to pop into here. If we use the Oath of Purging, um, we're going to get a Grace, which would put, hit, put the knight back up to maximum. We got a bonus of plus one when we fight. And we can fight with uh, two dice. So give us three dice against those uh, one of those zombies. We need sixes to destroy them. But I think that's a pretty good option. So we moved in there. Remember, we didn't have to draw an event card because we came out of the monastery. I think we're going to do that. We're going to attack the zombies and see if we can knock this card off for at least one turn. We'll see. Okay. Three dice. Three dice to get a six. One six. Come on. Six. We got one. Boom. Zombie is destroyed. Uh, Knight's secrecy goes down one, but... Oath of Purging is, is deactivated, and we get a Grace that puts her up to her maximum Grace, and the zombies are out of the village. And that is the end of the knight's turn. A good turn for the knight. If it was earlier in the game, I would have really enjoyed that. Um, but that was worthwhile because now this card is at least deactivated. Hopefully it stays deactivated for one turn. That would be awesome. And then last but not least, we do have the Paragon. Let's draw the event card for the Paragon and see what happens there. A Vile Messenger. Uh-oh. Um, we have to fend it off or we gain a one on the Darkness track. The Necromancer keeps his secret servants busy. Well, what, what can we do? We gotta, if we can fight it with two dice, that would be a four. That's, but if we... Oh, if we have an active um, aura, we do. Then we have to deactivate it and add three more dice. Well, that's our choice. Or I don't use that tactic and just roll one die. I want to keep the aura up right now for something better. Okay, let's just roll one die, see if we can fight it off. Come on, a six! We did actually fight it off. It was a four. Wow. Having some good rolls. Now, the uh, what the Paragon is going to do is search here. I'm looking across abilities. Do we have any ability for searching? No, we don't. Okay. Uh, let's just roll a die and see if we get a two. We did not succeed there. So no searching, and that is the end of the Paragon's turn. What a bad turn. It's just hoping for a little luck here. Searching is the only way we're going to win at this point. We've got to get, uh, we're, we got to get another eight um, clues. I don't think we're going to pull that off. So that means it's now the Necromancer's turn. And so this goes up to 29. God, that would have been 30 already if we had not gotten away with that vile messenger. And clue tokens, let's see, what do we got on this one? We got one, two, three. So this one's going away. We're going to get a tainted blight there. Let me find a taint. There we go. A taint is we cannot gain um, uh, grace there. And there's now four blights there as well. So that's not great. This one is where we've got plenty of opportunity on that one, I think. Let me see. Well, that's five, so this one's still around for, wait, one, two, three, yeah, for one more turn. And then we're going to roll for the Necromancer, see what he does up there in the mountains, a six. So he saw everybody. Uh, well, he definitely saw the Exorcist, so he's coming to the village where he will drop a Blight down, and it is going to be a curse. All right, well, curses suck. Where's a curse? Um... We, we lose one grace on entering. That's a bad one. Now, the cool thing is the Enchantress is immune to curses, I think. You know, all the ones I want her to be immune to on this card, she's not. It's a cool card, but wow. Okay, well, still, her Lens of Truth is pretty powerful. It, I guess it's affecting things that would um, impact, like, it's kind of like True Sight or something like that in a game. Uh, anyway, that's the end of um, that turn. So I think... You know, look, I think we're one away from... If it gets to 30 and I don't have... I haven't gathered any more clues this round, I'm going to try. Then I think that we are going to call it. Because I don't think we're going to win at that point. But we'll give it a try. Let's go back around and have another turn. I think the Necromancer is going to destroy the world in this game. That is for sure. Let's start with... Who do we want to start with? Oh, let's start with uh, our Enchanter. She's here. And, oh, wait, wait, what did I roll on? I rolled a six. So this card is not active this turn. We have to roll one, two, or three. That is great. Okay, so let's uh, first roll, or pull her event. Uh, lose a grace. Okay, that puts her down to one. It just says 
anathema. Uh, it says, uh, an ache in your gut, a rot in your soul, a stain, the color of lost innocence. And that is what happens to her. So she took, uh, just took a grace hit. But she is going to, is there a way to get her power back? Let me see. Um, well, only if she eludes something. Attune, exhaust one of your powers, including this. Time to deactivate or deactivate an essence. I only have one essence, and I don't like it. Exhaust after drawing a card for a successful search. I like that one. We're going to try and search. Let me think. I'm going to, I, have, I have a spark. I will use that for sure. And see if we can get a, a mystery there. Okay, I did decide to spend her spark. So we're going to do that. That gives us two dice. We got a five and a four, so we succeeded. But what gives us the best option? A four, a treasure chest, no. Plus one. If, uh, if a four is rolled while searching here. So that gives us 13 on the clue track. Not that great, but we do get to search. And if I want to, she's in the ruins, right? Uh, oh, three clues. We'll just take that. Um, one, two, three. Now we're up to 16. Um, here's some thunder, folks. I don't know what's going on in Texas. It is almost August, right? And there are storms and rain almost every day. It's kind of crazy. It's never, I don't remember this ever uh, where I'm at. Uh, anyway, that was a great turn for the Enchantress, though she only has one grace left. But that did, did give did give her, and I do have, I did have to use, I did not have, sorry, I'm talking like a crazy person today. I did not have to use her uh, ability on the search because those three clues were there. That actually breathed just a little bit of hope into things. We'll see. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, but that was good. Let's, uh, let's go with the Paragon, see if we can't get something similar going on. Paragon has a lot of cool stuff happening. There's nothing to fight there. It's just those two, the taint and the flux cage. Um, you know, and she, I actually, I think she's down to zero. Uh, I forgot to take away the taint when she moved there. She is actually, no, I did. I did do that when she moved. Yeah, because that went down, took her from two to one. Yeah, yeah. She had three... Two, no, I didn't. I did not. She is actually zero grace. So we need to get her on out of there, I think. Um, maybe. Well, let's draw the Paragon. Let's do the, take the Paragon's turn. We're going to draw his event. Oh, this is not good. A stench of sulfur and fiery, fiery glow tell you immediately what manner of fiend you are facing. So, compared to secrecy, well, his is three. The Paragon's three, so that's pretty good. Uh, let's see. Um, well, three secrecy. Four to five. If fearful demon, we're going to lose two secrecy uh, if we fail. Um, we're going to fight it with the uh, uh, one die. I'm not going to bother to use a tactic on this. A four, so we succeeded. We were able to evade the demon. That is good. And then he is going to search there as well. He does, he does also have a spark, so we're going to roll two dice. We can take advantage of these sparks. Come on, come on, come on, come on. A five and a three. Oh, five. Three is, in, is a failure. A five is the one we don't want. We want a four or six. So um, gain a treasure chest of a five plus rolled is while searching here. So we gain a treasure chest. Um, we have no way to avoid that, so that means he gets to draw another power if he wants to. Well, I might as well. Let's do it. Aura of Resolve. Oh, all heroes at your location get plus one die when fighting. That's actually not bad. He's got a lot of powers out, but anyway, that ends his turn. So, not what I wanted to have happen. All right, next we got the um, Paragon and the, the Exorcist. They are in the village with the Necromancer. I think we'll do the Knight first. Sorry, not the Paragon, the Knight. Knight's going to lose a secrecy from five to four because he's in the, she is in the space with the Necromancer. Her um, event is the Ritual. You may spend one Grace and lose one secrecy to cancel this event. Yeah, we're going to do that. And actually, that puts that actually is doable by the Knight. So um, as you draw closer, the chanting reaches a crescendo. Uh, they haven't seen you yet. So we... We struck out at them. They they saw us at the last minute. And we killed them, but we took a uh, we took a wound in in that as well, and died actually. But God saved us, and we are still alive. So, what do we do now? Well, I don't really want to stay there. That is not helpful. What is helpful? Um, yeah, we got to. I I kind of have to stay there, but we only have to deal with the uh, zombies. 
so I think we're going to stay there and search. I mean, I don't know what else to do. The knight doesn't. The knight also has a spark, so we're going to use the spark to search and see if we can get a mystery out there or something that will give us clues. A five and a six, so we definitely succeeded. Let's see which one does uh, what we get in the village. Village, village, village. A treasure chest. Are you kidding? Well, so the knight is going to look through her powers. I, I don't even bother to draw the treasure chest token. It doesn't matter. It doesn't require anything to turn it in, so we're just going to draw the top card. Holy Mantle, bonus, plus one grace, default grace. Add one to each die when praying. That is really good. I wish I had that a long time ago. That would have been fantastic, but I don't. And that is going to end the turn of the knight. Now she's going to have to defend herself or elude. She will... Let me see, with the zombies, it's elude three, so she's going to use her sprint, which gives her an elude two, and try and avoid the zombies. She rolled a three and a five, so she did. The zombies were of no mind to her. So now we're down to the exorcist. Let's draw the exorcist's event. Uh, sloppy search, roll one die and take the higher. Gain one secrecy, no effect, spend one. Oh, come on, we need a six, a five. We rolled a five, what is a five? No effect, right, so no effect. They clearly don't know how to look, so they didn't find us. There was, they were searching. They did a sloppy, bad job of it. They did not find our exorcist in the village. But what can the exorcist do? Well, first we're going to roll for our two uh, boons. All right. Neither of them are activated. That changes my thought process here. I think, well, I think this is it, actually. I don't think we're going to survive. But if I was a few turns in, I would probably... Instead of taking an action there, I would use the travel, the, the lodestone or waystone and discard it during your turn to instantly move any to any location and gain a secrecy. I would use that. Let's we'll use that. That'll put him up to five. Now he is going to come here, which means he'll lose a grace. He's down to one grace, but then he can search, because really we have to. We don't have a choice. It's only one die. A six. That is perfect. Here, look at how that worked out. Are we dead yet? I don't know. Man, maybe we can do this. Plus three clues if a six is rolled here. Okay. One, two, three clues. Now, the one thing it says, um, it doesn't, is that, the thing I don't understand about this card is does it replace? Like on this one, it says plus one clue if a four is rolled while searching here. Five, you get a treasure chest. Does that mean you're only locked into those things or is that in addition to? I'm going to say, I think I played it both ways. I'm going to leave it like that right now. But we are up to a 19... <laughs> Uh, clues all of a sudden. Uh, though, um, I don't think it's, I think it's the end for us. I don't know that we're going to have a lot of options here, um, but we'll give it, uh, we'll give it the old college try. That is the end of the exorcist turn, but the exorcist also has to evade or try to elude these uh, zombies with one die. Or no, no, he's here. Doesn't have to do that at all. So he's okay. All right. Um, and that is the end of that. Now we go to the Necromancer's turn. We are at a 30 darkness now. That is terrible. But here we're, here's where we go. Here's where we go with this. Um, so this one is going to go away. It's expired. That means we're going to put a decay blight up here. So this, this, this uh, broken seal goes away. We put a decay blight. A decay... While it's yet another blight up in the mountains, it just means that we um, can't use items up there. They decay. So that's, and that's okay. I'm not too worked up about that. That's the only, that was the only quest on the board. So the next thing we're going to do is move the Necromancer. Necromancer rolled a two. That means that this is active again. So we cannot refresh powers again. And it is going to move, he is going to move. Is there anybody with a two or less secrecy, or a three or less secrecy. No. So he'll just move. Unfortunately, that sends him to the place where our clues are. Hmm. What kind of risks do we take there? We gotta get the, uh, we, we have to get the um, Enchantress out of there. That's for sure. Okay, and then, now here's the bad thing. We are gonna draw a, a card for a Blight, but it's gonna be in the Monastery. Because now that uh, we're at 30, every blight appears in the monastery. And if we hit 4, the game is over. So webs appear in the monastery. The monastery is still a safe place for us in every other way except for that. So anyway, we're going to leave it in a cliffhanger because there's going to be one more episode. We're going to see what we can pull here. 
I mean, this is about as close and as tight a game as I've ever gotten. So next turn for sure, someone's going to have to succeed, succeed to search and find the relic, and then find we're going to we're one away. So we, we're going to have to stay here for a little bit with the necromancer, at least a couple of people, and see if we can pull things off. Um, and then maybe the knight goes back. Maybe the knight joins them down there. Knight should be the one to pull the final relic if we can. Well, we can't do that. We got to go somewhere else to get the relic. I think I have a plan, but we'll wait until next episode for that plan. We took three turns. Again, this is about as tight a game as I've ever played to this. So, whew, man, I hope we succeed. It, uh, it's looking pretty grim, but I love. This is what I love about this game. We actually have a chance. It's crazy. We're all the way down to the end. Those last two turns and three clues back to back, giving us six new clues, putting us right to 19 when we need 20 to actually pull this off. Well, sort of pull it off. I don't think we're going to do it, but it's worth taking that extra turn. I thought I was going to pause there uh, and just end it if we hit 30 because we were so far away, but we're not far away anymore. Uh, still really challenging, but not far away. So anyway, I will talk to you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care, and have a good night.